Disney Interactive came up with Avalanche Studios and they pitched uh, these two great ideas. One was toy box mode and one was storybook mode. And um, one was, you know, let's have our, our roots firmly planted in the story and the elements of the toy story worlds. And one was, you know, let's do this crazy, wild, imaginative play that could be kind of anything, that kids could go crazy, and the sky's the limit. And uh, my memory, which, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll check this, but my memory is that John said, oh, yeah, I'll take both of those, like John is wont to do. They took our characters, they took our world, and ran with it in their own way, and, and Came, came up with some really nice things. It felt worthy of, uh, you know, it's, it's what we would hope we would do ourselves, and it felt like it had that kind of Pixar quality uh, right out of the gate. What's cool about a video game, in particular this one, is that you can go outside of that story. We, we kind of uh, have designed the rules. What does Andy's room look like? What does Bonnie's room look like? What is that world? What, what's the nature and the, the style of that world? But outside of that, they can go well beyond. I mean, they, they go places we would love to go, but we can't. I mean, we, we, there's so many things that we don't do in the story uh, because we don't have 10 hours. We have, you know, a little over an hour to tell the story. And it's great to explore in the game the possibilities of other ways kids play. And that's kind of what's exciting about Toy Box Mode is, is that you can play however you want to play. But I think it's really fun to open up the world, especially with these characters. Um, open up the world and just you know be free to kind of explore and, and just play around and, and that, that's the cool thing about the game is you can do almost anything. Everyone's got a great idea and it really comes down to execution and I think that's where the guys at Avalanche really pulled it off. You are a child plaything! You are a sad strange little man. You can compare the toys. Okay. You know this is uh, this is like this is one of these kind of toys that essentially illustrate the fact that civilization as we know it is coming to an end you know <laughs> you know the apocalypse is upon us when this is entertainment yeah 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 <laughs> see here he is and beyond you're flying this isn't flying this is falling with style I won't even start with the way this guy is built okay <laughs> what's he what's he got inside there I took this and played with it four minutes and did the same thing and got the button stuck in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. shut up, Buzz. <laughs> played his helmet. Oh, off. wait a minute. Right. Oh, I right here. I come in There's a little lisp there, Buzz. And there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? Oh, yeah. Ah! Whoa! Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Did I frighten you? Those are fine for Look I mean, at that. They're vintage, kind of like Western wear uh, dungarees. The body of Woody was actually modeled after. Tom Hanks's body, so that's exactly what they think. Yes, this is exactly what Tom's body looks like. Good looking in slacks, huh? <laughs> now there. Tom's a handsome man. Not a bright guy, but a handsome guy. Buzz, look an alien! Where? Ah! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. My problem was, you now my daughter goes, Where, where'd the Buzz Lightyear doll go? It's sitting next to my bed now. I have it on my nice, I uh, just, uh, you know, just wanted to look at myself a little bit more. <laughs> Buzz, will you get up here and give me a hand? When I first saw the first one, I went and I saw Buzz. The first scene I saw was me. You're mocking me, aren't you? I right. cracked up. I said, this is really funny. I've set my laser from stun to kill. Ah, oh, great, great. Yeah, and if anyone attacks us, we can blink him to death. Woody is so volatile, he yells a lot, so that, you know, my right. vocal cords would be in shreds after a while, and my diaphragm would be stretched out. I made movies where I'd carried guys through the jungle, you know, <laughs> for weeks at a time, and I've never been as tired as I am right now. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Don't you get it? You see the hat? I am Mrs. Nesbitt. <laughs> Snap out of it, Buzz! I've talked to my five-year-old about going to see it, and I've, you yeah. know, I've explained it. You know, he's just thrilled. Right. There's a picture of Woody and Buzz in in uh, in, in Newsweek magazine. I said, "Hey, buddy, that's uh, that's me." And he was just like, "Study, Dad, this is not you. No, my voice is that." And he was looking, he was utterly fascinated by a by a still of it. And you guys had young kids back then yep. when the first one was introduced. Do they still love? your roles that you play. Are they still huge fans of these roles? They are. Uh, we were at Disneyland. We were, say, there's, there's, a, there's 
a night leave, there's a fantastic, what is it, fantasy in the sky kind of thing? And it, it closes with every Disney character in history dancing on the Mark Twain steamboat as it goes around Tom Sawyer's Island. And there is Mickey and Donald and Daisy. They're all there, Pluto, Peter Pan, Captain Hook, all the princesses, and there was Buzz and Woody as well dancing on the back. And my daughter, who was in her 30s, burst into tears because oh. she realized that some version of her dad is going to be at Disneyland for the rest of eternity. And that, so uh, you, know, you, 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 you don't discount that. That's a powerful thing. Hey, wow! What? What is it? Woody! Buzz! Oh, great, you found them. Where were they? Here in the car! See? Now, what did I tell you? Right where you left them. Malvado Doutor Porquinho. Este é o senhor Doutor Porquinho. E nós temos que acertar as contas, xerife Wood. <risos> Assim, o malvado Doutor Porquinho foi derrotado e o trem dos órfãos conseguiu chegar a salvo ao Espera um pouco. Você tinha uma nave porco gigante e uma frota de parasitas mortais e ainda assim você perdeu para um cowboyzinho e seu cavalo? O tapa-olho dificultou muito a minha percepção de profundidade. Claro! Culpe o tapa-olho! De qualquer forma, vamos voltar ao jogo. O que se me permite dizer é muito impressionante. Eu não acredito que você construiu isso. É, eu queria criar um mapa que descrevesse todos os pontos importantes que encontramos em nossa viagem emocionante. Ei, e agora? Devemos ir pra casa do Ed? Cuidado, Rex. Você jogou todos os brinquedos da fazenda de brinquedos do alto. Ah, desculpe, desculpe. Ah, desculpe. seu cabeça ouro. Agora eu tenho que fazer toda a cidade. Perdoe-me. Aqui é o que mesmo? Boa observação, meu amiguinho. Essa é uma parte especial do jogo chamada Rodeio do Woody, na qual você pode viajar livremente espalhando a justiça como se fosse um xerife no Velho Oeste. Nós podemos ir. Sério? Vamos. Apenas se um certo tipo de cabeça oca prometer não quebrar isso em pedacinhos. Provavelmente eu não vou. Eu prometo. <risos>
Ótimo, conseguimos o celular. Agora precisamos ligar pelo telefone da casa. O Rex ainda está perdido. E não trouxe o telefone sem fio de volta. Vamos ver o que está acontecendo com ele. Vamos! Doente. Vamos atrás do Rex e depois alcançamos vocês. Sim, senhor! Vocês o ouviram, homens! Movam-se, movam-se, movam-se! Eu sei que você está aqui em algum lugar, Zug! Ah! Rex, era para pegar o telefone e voltar imediatamente. Jogo do Buzz Lightyear! <risos> Não jogamos isso há anos? Sim, eu entrei no quadrante Gama! Eu estou perto da Fortaleza de Zurg! Vamos, pessoal! Precisamos voltar! <risos> Rex, nós sabemos que você pode derrotá-lo. Seja rápido. Nós trabalhamos juntos para nos salvar e para voltar para casa em segurança. Então o Andy nos entregou a Bonnie e foi assim que nós chegamos aqui. Perguntas? Mas e a padaria assombrada? É! Você se esqueceu de uma das melhores partes! O quê? Você não nos contou sobre a padaria assombrada? Padaria assombrada? Ah, eu, eu também! Andy, logo conte a eles Ok, ok, sentem-se. Então, aconteceu que uma padaria pequena e muito esquisita foi construída na parte mais alta do cemitério. Os fantasmas insatisfeitos possuíam as mercadorias da padaria. Imaginem, uma terra onde os alimentos comem as pessoas. Alimentos comendo pessoas. Não atrapalhe. Era noite de lua cheia. Os bolinhos estavam ficando impacientes, pois já haviam comido a cidade toda, mas continuavam famintos. <risos> <risos> 